Welcome to the Dipshit Files, episode 44. I'm Mr. Scriptkeeper. And I'm Mrs. Scriptkeeper. And this week we've got, what do we have? We got uh, cryptids. Cryptids. Fine. Yeah. Are we doing? Well, a cryptid. A, well, actually, one? there's five of them. Oh, crap. But they're all the same species. Oh, I fucking know what's going on. <laughs> You're going to find out. And what state are we going to? We're actually heading off to Maine. Okay. So there's cryptids and no people in Maine. Let's yep. check it out on this Dipshit Files. <laughs> All right, so what are we calling today's episode? Well, I went with the Palmyra wolf incident. Never heard of it. I, well, it, neither had I until I started doing some research. I didn't exactly know what to call it. Um, so I went with what other Palmyra. individuals have called this thing. So basically, we start off. I start off with a bit of information, and then I roll into a story. Okay. The story itself is not my story. Mm? It's It's... The person, the people who went through this, mm -hmm. uh, it's their story. Okay. And I'm just reading it. Palmyra. Um, it yeah. sounds like Elvira. Is this a big boobed wolf? <laughs> I, do too. I mean, is that what makes it a unique Why creature? do you always have to go there? Because I'm a 14 year old boy. Um, yeah. Okay. So we got a story for us and some informational some yeah. science and shit. And a little bit, yeah. All right. Well, let's fucking do it. All right. The Dipshit Files presents the Palmyra wolf incident in Maine. Eh? This week, we're going to continue with our exploration into cryptids, and today's episode takes us ultimately to Maine. Yeah. However, we're going to stop along the way to check into a weird story about wolf hybrids. Mm. So first stop is Montana. All right. On May 16th, 2018, a wolf-like animal was shot and killed on a ranch outside Denton. Wolf-like. Yeah. With long grayish fur, a large head, and an extended snout, the animal shared many of the same characteristics as a wolf, but its ears were too large, its legs and body too short, its fur uncharacteristic of that of, to a common wolf. So, so it's just a fugly wolf. Leave it alone. So what was it? Mr. Fuggles. Uh, quote, we have no idea what this is until we get a DNA report back said Bruce Ockley. It's Mr. Fuggles. Leave him alone. Bur bury him with honor and leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> Information manager for Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. It was near a rancher's place it was shot, and our game wardens went to investigate. The whole animal was sent to our lab in Bozeman, and that's the last I ever heard of it. Social media from around the Lewiston area was buzzing, with many people chiming in on what they believed the creature to be. It's a grizzly cub, one person wrote, under a year and starving from the look. Maybe a dire wolf, wrote another, because I don't believe they're all gone. Speculation roamed as far as identifying that the animal was a cryptocanid species said to roam the forests of North America. Quote, this could very well be what's being called dog man, one poster suggested. Dude, be careful out there going home. Shut up, dude. No, seriously, there's like a dog man out there? A dog man. Yeah, half man, half dog. You hear yourself, right? Oh, actually, I do, Jason. Okay. And I've decided to dedicate my life to the study of dog man. Well, please let me know how you do. I will check in with you periodically. Well, okay. They're spotted each day, and the government quells any and all reports. It's a dog man cover-up, I guess. <laughs> so that's important. Several people report being strong-armed into keeping quiet about their reports by men wearing black suits. Right. These are all just facts, man. Look into it if you don't believe it. End quote. Hello, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. What do you want? Well, I'm an independent researcher and I'm here to ask you about your dogman incident. Now, look, I'm not supposed to talk about it. No, dude, it's cool. You can talk about it with me. I believe you. I don't care if you believe me. I get my ass kicked if I tell you. Wait, what? The men in black. What? Oh, fuck. I've already said too much. Get the fuck off my lawn and never come back. Oh, I'm going to waste at least 20 years of my life looking into this shit. Well, evidently... Uh, Ockley, one but wildlife biologist, doesn't believe. Dire Wolf was a song by the Grateful Dead from 1971, he said, mm -hmm. of the prehistoric species speculation. I know. I listened to it many times. On weed, man. N number two, it's a prehistoric animal, like mastodons and saber-toothed tigers, so it doesn't exist. It might exist if you're on weed, man. I don't know, sorry. Nonetheless, there was an element of uncertainty about the creature, even among the wildlife biologists. 
One biologist noted several occasions within the last few years in which canid predators, neither all wolf nor all dog, were spotted by ranchers east of the Continental Divide. Quote, we've had a few instances of wolf-dog hybrids out there, he said. One was out somewhere in eastern central Montana, but we caught it and it turned out to be a hybrid, end quote. So how's your research into the dog man going? Oh, it's going really good, Jason. Thank you. You got any good leads on dog man? Well, we found a hybrid dog wolf uh, the other day. We're halfway there. Now you just got to find one that's part man. Fuck you, Jason. Well, it took two years, but the results returned. DNA from the animal was tested at the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Forensic Laboratory in Ashland, Oregon, which confirmed it was a young Canis lupus. Mm. May have looked weird, but it was indeed a gray wolf. Oh, hey, Jason. Oh, hey, Ben. Well, remember when last time we talked, I said we had made some progress and that we'd found like a hybrid wolf dog? Yeah, that's not progress. Right. Well, it turns out it was just a fucked up wolf. Dude, Ben, what are you doing with your life? Dog man's real, dude. The only way that this mystery could be solved is by actually killing one of these weird-looking animals and sending it off to a lab to satisfy our curiosity and evidently quell our fear. Leave him alone. It just goes to show you, even in this day and age, humans are still deeply afraid of wolves. Now, I know I've got my own story about my experience with wolves, Mm -hmm. um, which I'll have to tell at one point. Maybe we can talk after. But I am fully aware of how different wolves Wolves are from domestic dogs. Their brains just seem to work differently. Call the wild. Well, they're apex predators and quite impressive ones at that. They're smart creatures and anything dangerous and smart, well, we either demonize it or kill it. As Mm. humans, that's just what we do. We kind of like dolphins, though. So I even had a hunter friend of mine. I digress. I'm going to digress for a moment. I had a hunter friend of mine tell me that uh, they kill wolves every chance they get simply because wolves, quote, kill for sport. Mm. Now, that day, I didn't have the energy for a debate over the topic. However, this is categorically untrue. Biologists and wildlife officials state that wolves don't hunt for sport, but sometimes kill more than they can eat at one point, especially in winter, when frigid temperatures preserve the killed prey for later consumption. So... That really, the question is, do wolves kill for sport? Okay. The answer is kind of, but only very rarely and under special circumstances. So I guess the answer would be yes, with a caveat. So I asked this question um, because it has only come up when I've spoken to hunters. And some hunters argue that wolves hunt for pleasure, so-called surplus killing. Uh, I think that's what they call it. Right. Because this seems to provide evidence that wolves do not eliminate the weakest members of a herd. They do not strengthen the herd, and therefore wolves are unnecessary at best. What? Right? So when wolves kill, uh, quote unquote, excessively, and they don't consume some, some of the animals they kill, mm-hmm. it's usually under one or two circumstances. So, one... The snow depth is greater than 27 inches for white-tailed deer and or the size of the pack is very small. So either case is extremely rare. Uh, And even still, 72% of wolf-killed deer carcasses were utilized 75% or more. Mm. So they're still eating eating all of it. They're just a little little pack. Right, right. So wolves do focus on the weakest members of the herd, the very young and the very old, those animals that have a very low reproductive value. However, in contrast, human hunters kill those animals that have a high reproductive value, the females. So what I wanted to say to my friend was, it's okay to admit they scare you. (laughs) (laughs) Wolves scare everyone. Right. I mean, they're fucking smart. Just look at all the cryptic sto- cryptid stories out there. Mm, they're always wolf type or, things. Yeah. Right. But or let's monkeys. just call it what it is. Hunting wolves for sport and not necessity. Right. You know? So, huh. There's a bit of irony there, isn't there? Sure. Anyways. Anywho. We're it's, getting all the letters from the I know. hunters now. Thanks so a lot. I'm circling back around to my original focus and that's of humans being afraid of wolves. Monique's so that, opinions do not <laughs> represent the scat cast views necessarily. <laughs> Not at all. All right, so now we're going to uh, jump into this story, this uh, the meat and potatoes of this episode, which Mr. is... Mr. Fuggles the Big Boobed Pile Mira. <laughs> okay. 
Wolf guy. Was, there's actually five of them. Oh, wow. Lots of boobs. Hey, Ben. How's your dog man research going? Oh, fuck. Yeah, I'm really good, actually. Yeah, you find any more wolves with mange? No, actually, we found like more evidence of the creature, and we've even named it. Okay. I'm calling him Mr. Fuggles. Yeah. So now that we've kind of meandered through wolf lore a bit and right. yeah and touched on a, a weird cryptid ish thing in montana <laughs> and told those hunters <clears throat> no i know Bro. don't lie just speak the truth oh, so anyways shit. here we go so in tw- 2005 eric martin was working in a paper mill in maine and he'd been working at this paper mill for about 20 years one day he was reaching up to get something off of a shelf when he threw his back out After seeing a doctor, he was told that he had slipped a number of discs, and ultimately it was meant that he was not able to do his job anymore. So after some time had passed and he tried to continue working, he began to find that all the things that he used to do, he just couldn't do anymore. So he filed for disability and was forced to retire. So he's suddenly out of work. His wife, Shelly Martin, was a stay-at-home mom at the time and realized that she needed to go out and get a job. So she started making some phone calls and talking to family and friends, and she found a great job in her hometown in Maine. Uh, That town was called Palmyra. So there are people in Maine, okay. Well, yeah. I'm kidding. Uh, Palmyra was a very small rural community. And I mean, we're talking maybe 1,200 people that live there. Okay. Yeah. So they also had a 17-year-old daughter named Chelsea, who was not eager to move. But it was the only place that they could really afford, so they had to go. Luckily, because Palmyra was such an affordable place to live relative to where they had been living, that for less money, they actually ended up getting a sizable piece of property, much bigger than the one that they had lived on before. So this is a beautiful farmhouse that sat on a whole bunch of acreage, uh, but it was incredibly isolated. So you had to go down this bumpy access road to get to their long driveway. And then once you were on the property, you'd look out and it was just a full 360 degrees of very dense forest Mm. and virtually no one ventured into it and there were no nature trails or anything like that that man just looks amazing it was nature yeah it was just dark dense forest everywhere you looked so even though no one's really happy about it they end up moving into this farmhouse and as they're unpacking their truck eric picks up one of the many rifles that he owned So Eric came from a long line of hunters. He loved to hunt. It was apparently his favorite thing to do, and he had a whole collection of guns that he kept. And as he's carrying the rifle into the house, Shelly says, oh, no, 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 we're not keeping the guns in the house. You have a barn. You're going to put your guns out there. Hmm. This had always been a point of contention for them in their marriage. Sherry just didn't feel safe having guns in the house, especially having kids in there. So ultimately, Eric agrees with his wife and takes his collection to the barn. So he and his son, Sean, who had come out to help him, they built this gun case for all of his rifles. It was really heavy duty, and they put it in the barn, locked the case, and then locked the barn itself. So they were totally secure in the barn, but definitely not readily accessible. And that was really fucking dumb. And we'll see why. Because Mr. Fuggles. Right. (laughs) So over that first year, Shelly and Eric developed this ritual where at the end of the day, they would go out on the front porch of their farmhouse and look out into their front yard and they would drink coffee together. And it was something they both look forward to. And virtually every night they did this. So almost exactly a year after moving in, it was in early 2006. Shelly and Eric are sitting on their front porch enjoying their coffee. They're chatting, and and Shelly thinks she sees something in the woods. Now, you have to understand the layout and how far away they are from the woods to get a sense of what she was seeing. So She's like, is that a wolf with big titties? (laughs) (laughs) Just looked like it. I couldn't tell. Right in front of their porch, there was a gravel road where they parked their cars. About 20 yards away from the house, to the left is their barn, and beyond the barn, basically straight out from the porch, is this huge open field where there's no trees or anything. So it's like open grazing area. And then beyond the field was the beginning of the tree line of this really dense forest. So we're talking at least a few hundred feet away where she sees these lights. 
and she described it like a pulsating light. It didn't look like a car or some sort of vehicle, not to mention there was no road out straight ahead from their porch anyway. It was just dense forest where That's absolutely no one should have been. Right. So when he sees the light, Eric immediately thinks there's a poacher on his property. See, I would have immediately think it would be Mr. Fuggles, a big titted wolf. <laughs> Because <laughs> of course you would. That's how I Why think. am I not surprised by that? It's really a hope. So so he calls to his son, Sean, uh, who had not been actually living with them, but he was staying the night that night. He called him outside and said, hey, do you think there's a poacher down there at the edge of the tree line? And Sean's like, I don't know, maybe. Eric decides that he wants to go tell this person to get the fuck off his property. So he asked Sean to come with him. They figured they would just get to the edge of the property and yell, hey, this is private property. You need to leave. So as they're walking across the field and they're getting closer to the tree line, the lights, those pulsating lights, they begin to fade and disappear back into the woods. And they get all the way up to the tree line and they can't see any lights at all. So even though at this point, Point, standing on the edge of the forest, Eric and Sean are fairly confident that this poacher is left. They decide, just to be sure, let's walk a little ways into the woods, even though it's totally dark. We're not going to get lost. We'll just walk a little ways into the woods and just continue to yell, hey, this is private property, so they really do leave. Oh, so they begin walking into this very dense forest. Lots of low-hanging limbs. It's not an easy walk. There's no walking trails or anything like that. And they walk, you know, like 10 yards into the woods. And then they hear what sounds like someone walking parallel to them, maybe like 15 yards away from them to their left. And they stop and they look and they didn't want to take any chance that they were being stalked by a predator. So they thought, you know what? The lights are gone. I don't know what animal this is. Mr. Let's just Buckles. let's just get the fuck out of here. So about a month goes by and Chelsea's boyfriend Nathan was staying with the family at the farm and it was the first really nice spring day. I mean, it had been a very dark and dreary winter. Evidently Maine winters tend to be that way. Yeah. So that weekend Nathan and Chelsea decided to go for a walk around the woods. They take the two family dogs and start walking across the big field in front of the house and into the forest, this area we, we just discussed. So this is the same area Sean and Eric, Eric had been looking for those lights when they heard what sounded like an animal near them. So at first, Chelsea had the dogs on leashes, but then she got to the forest and she let them off their leash to run around and get some exercise because they've been cooped up all winter as well. Mm. The two dogs instantly take off running for about 100 yards, and then they come to a dead stop right outside this big mound. Mr. Fuggles. It looks like a dirt mound, but when they get up close to it, they can tell it's more actually more like a den. There are these huge pieces of wood that have been like leaned in, like a lean-to type mm -hmm. structure with moss and dirt and grass put all over the outside. I mean, it seemed like like it looked like a very intentionally made mound. And there's like this circular hole that's been created right on the front of it. And the dogs have stopped right outside of this thing. And they're poking their heads in the hole and they're smelling around. So Nathan and Chelsea are looking at this thinking, who the hell did this? Is this like a hunter's thing? Is this something a hunter might make or would an animal make this? This seems really big for some animal to make this, but it definitely was made on purpose, whatever it was. So Nathan, he takes a peek down into this den, but it's totally dark. And then he thinks he hears growling coming inside the den. So without any hesitation, he says, well, we got to go. <laughs> I don't know what's living in there. We got to go. I respect that. And so they Mr. take <laughs> Fuggles, got some big old tea. So they take the dogs and they put them back on leashes and the two of them get the out of the forest as quickly as they can. My advice is just to stay out of it. When Nathan and Chelsea come back to the house, they tell Eric and Shelly and actually Sean was there too. They said, hey, we found this stand of some kind out out in the middle of the woods, basically straight out from your porch. And that's when Eric and Sean said, hey, you know, about a month ago, we were out in that same area and we could have sworn we heard some animal stalking us. Buckles, buckles. 
really fucking creepy, right? And that's when an old man came out of the bushes and was like, let me tell you a story <laughs> about Mr. Fuggles. Once upon a time, this dude had sex with a wolf and then Mr. Fuggles was born. Dude, Mr. We're on a Cub Scout trip. Yeah, one day I'm a weebolo. So like I was saying, Mr. Fuggles is a product of bestiality. Bestiality. <laughs> so another couple of months go by and Eric and Shelly are sitting on their front porch and they're having their coffee ritual and there was just this low kind of mist that hung over the entire field and as they're sitting there they're commenting on how eerie it looked and what started as just kind of a friendly discussion about the general creepiness took a real turn when they realized that they couldn't hear anything there was no wildlife sounds no crickets no animals no anything it was completely silent and normally at night because they're out here all the time it was humming with life so Shelly had this high powered flashlight that she always had out there with her just fucking with airplane and pilots. she starts scanning the property not really knowing what she's looking for but it just seems really odd that they couldn't hear anything but after she scans across the whole field, she doesn't see anything, so she puts her flashlight down. And that's when Mr. Fuggles whipped his titties out. And they just start, she starts talking to Eric about whatever they normally talk about over coffee at night. Manatees. Eric would say in numerous interviews later that for whatever reason, when she put that flashlight down, he suddenly felt like they were in danger. He got this impending doom. He looked out, he didn't see anything, but all of a sudden he says, you know, we got to go inside. I don't know what it is, but we got to go inside now. Pooped him. And Shelly's like, come on, I want to stay out a little bit longer. We'll Pooped go in in a few him. minutes. Eric stands up and he's like, nope, go inside. <laughs> and he tries to take her arm to pull her in the house. And then her arm turned into spiders? Sorry. But all of a sudden, Shelly stops talking. She stops moving entirely. Mm. And she says, did you hear that? And Eric immediately knew that whatever it was... It's the reason that he had the sudden feeling of being in danger. Eric turns around and he can't see anything because it's too dark. Shelly grabs her flashlight and she begins scanning the tree line again. And when she gets to the field and gets about halfway across right in front of them, she stops. Because right in the middle of the field are three creatures that look like wolves. Mm. These huge creatures that are looking right at them. Then two others join them. So now there's five wolf-like creatures just staring at them. Two. Silently, right from the middle of their field. Shelly says, what are those? Multiple fuckles. And Eric, who's an experienced hunter, he says, I have no idea. I think they're bears, maybe? Wrong. They could be wolves. <laughs> He's like, I think those are penguins. We got to get in there. <laughs> He's like, I don't fucking care. We got to go inside. So right at the point they decide to move into the house, these things start charging across the field directly at them so fast that Shelly wasn't even able to keep the light on them because they're trying to get in the house. They're already halfway across the field. So they go inside, they fucking slam the door, they lock it, and without saying a word, the two of them make their rounds across the entire bottom floor, knocking, locking every window, closing every blind, making sure everything's shut. Shit. So there was just something different about these five creatures. The way they started running towards them, it just felt like they were targeting Eric and Shelly. And so even after the house had been secured, they just didn't feel safe. Mr. Fuckles, Mr. Fuckles. They were beyond creeped out. Fair. So they're standing in the middle of their cabin and Eric's saying, okay, so my guns are in the barn. I, I can't. We have no protection. Oh. And Shelly's like, whatever you do, do not go out there. We don't know what these things are. Could it be a bear? It could be a wolf. We don't know. Don't go out there. Mr. Fuggles. Shelly goes upstairs, shuts off all the lights, and makes sure all the windows are shut. And then she goes into her daughter Chelsea's room. She wakes her up and says, hey, come here. You got to look at this. And they go to the window and they kind of like Scare the shit peek through the window okay. because they don't want to totally open it up and stare out because they don't want the creatures to see them. But they're kind of like peeking out the window. And she says, look. And standing on the gravel are these five creatures. They're just 
standing in a row looking at the house just and then staring out of nowhere they turn into voltron and it's it was a giant wolf man with big titties. <laughs> it was oh, god damn it with your titties <laughs> Sorry. it was like they were waiting for them to come to the front door they were just patiently standing there in a line looking at the house it didn't look like normal animal behavior at all and as she was looking at them one of the animals looks up at shelly in the window and the creature stands up on two legs and he says, I'd like to talk to you about your car's extended warranty. <laughs> it fucking gets on its hind legs Yikes. and looks directly at her. Yikes. And Shelly gasps and falls over because the creature's like eight feet tall. Eey. So Shelly's on the ground looking at Chelsea and she can't believe what she just saw. It's like her brain can't process that this creature, one, had even seen. He'd barely had their head up in the window and it stood on its hind legs. It was so big. What are they doing sitting in a row outside the house waiting for them? Like, what is going on here? Mm. So Shelly tells Chelsea, get in your bed and don't go to the window. Don't leave this room. And that's when Shelly also realizes that she hasn't even heard her two dogs. She's worried they might be outside. So I don't she, like the story anymore. She starts quietly walking all along the top floor looking for her dogs. She's calling to them quietly whispering and after a couple of minutes she finds them but they're hiding uh, okay. like huddled in the corner of the master bedroom next to each other like they're scared okay, by what's acceptable. outside that's acceptable i thought it was taking another turn meanwhile eric was pacing downstairs thinking that i need to go to the barn i need to get my guns to protect my family but he knew that with his disability and the fact that he can't walk very fast anyway, and he'd have to unlock the barn, then he'd have to pull down that huge gun case, unlock that, all the while he's exposed to these animals that are out there. And so the next best thing in his mind is maybe he could run outside, get in his truck, back the truck up to the front door, and then he could get his wife and his daughter to come out, jump in the car, and they could drive away. <laughs> So he just goes to the window, he pulls the blinds down to look outside, and those five fucking creatures are gone. They're no longer standing on the gravel path in front of the house. He doesn't know where they are, but they're not out front anymore. So on the roof. He closes the blinds and he's like, well, I don't know where they are. It's too dangerous to go out there. He starts pacing, trying to come up with a plan. He decides to take another peek and sees them back in the field where they first saw them. Hmm. He could see all five of them. They're still facing the house, but he can see them because the moon has now popped through um, and he's got a bit of illumination of the field. He's like, okay, maybe if I just keep an eye on them, I can open the door, run out, get the car, back it up without them seeing me. And so <laughs> without telling Shelly his plan, he opens the door and moves out onto the porch. He can still see them out in the field. He's got a good line of sight on him. And as quiet as he can be, he walks down the steps and he makes his way over to his truck, which is about 10 yards from the porch. And as he's getting closer to the truck, he's keeping his eye on these creatures in the field. They haven't moved. They apparently haven't seen him moving either. So as he gets to the driver's side of his truck, he's fumbling with his keys, struggling to hit the unlock button when his motion sensor light kicks on. Duh. He is so on edge being out there. When the light kicks on, he drops his keys because he's so startled. Oh, and no. the first thing he does is he looks towards the field and he sees that one of the five creatures is now standing on its hind legs, oh. looking at him directly. Before he even bends down to get his key keys, he sees them all running towards him. Oh. He reaches down, he grabs his keys, he runs back to the house as fast as he can, and he gets inside and slams the door right as he can hear them crossing the gravel in front of the house. Fastest 10-yard dash of his life. He hears them bound onto the porch and start running around the wraparound porch. He's so scared. He's too scared to even look in the window, so he ducks down to get out of view. Shelly, who's upstairs, can hear everything that's going on, and she yells, Eric, what's going on? And he goes, stay up there. Stay up there. Don't come downstairs. Mr. Fuckles. Everyone's just frozen, waiting, knowing that these creatures are right on the other side, walking along his wraparound porch. And after a while, Eric hears the footsteps of these creatures leave the porch and go back onto the gravel area. And at some point, he pokes his head up and he looks and all five are sitting there just facing the house, waiting for them to come out of the house again. Mm. 
So he scurries up the stairs to where Shelly and Chelsea are, and they are just so scared. So they decide they've got to call the police. They if, just wanted a snossage or something. If, if nothing else, the police will drive up, and their vehicle might scare away these things. Or they could bring snossages. But on the phone, Shelly, she's trying to explain what's going on. She's really scared, but she lets on that what they're really afraid of is something she uses the Mr. word thing on their property in fact it's five things running around outside their property and immediately the police officer who's responding to this he's like oh mr right. fuggles well are you sure it's not a moose right are you sure it's not a bear and finally she's like no can you please just send somebody over here and he's like listen lady just keep your door shut keep your window shut and i'm sure it'll be fine and ultimately that's how the call ends hmm they're on their own. Fuck them, huh? The right. family. Like, You're a half hour away. Right. It's Maine. The family felt helpless, and Eric especially felt really frustrated because he can't protect his family. Despite his own personal arsenal. Right. Yeah. Shelly making him leave his shit out in the fucking. Anyways. Yeah. So, because he doesn't have a weapon, he can't get to his vehicle. They're just trapped. So they decide the only thing they can do is barricade themselves inside the house. And so for the next 30 minutes, they put heavy furniture in front of all the doors and the windows. <laughs> they block everything as best they could. They got kitchen knives and they got an ax that they had inside to chop some wood. Real quick. Have you ever thought about being in that kind of scenario? We've all seen the movies where mm -hmm. you have to barricade the doors. Mm -hmm. fucking, can you imagine being in that? Like our furniture? <laughs> oh, fuck, put, bring that couch like oh god ow ow ow, ow. Why, god it doesn't it. even move I just it wouldn't be as practical <laughs> it would take forever and it wouldn't work either because they'd be like get wow that, this is actually really light yeah, for get a couch that, well get that 750 pound cabinet yeah that's, it just help me wife we'll slide this across the floor right and then we just have a big ass window and they just go right through I that. know like, oh, shit. so they go upstairs they lock themselves in the master bedroom with their weapons weapons mm -hmm. and their dogs and they get on the bed and they just decide all we can do is wait until the sun comes up. During the time they were barricading their house, they would look out from time to time and they would see the five creatures just sitting on that gravel area mm. right in front of their house, staring at the house, just waiting for them. When they finally went upstairs and barricaded themselves in that room, they immediately heard the creatures move off the gravel, and they heard a couple of them at least walk onto the porch and start pacing around the porch. And it's actually totally silent besides the sound of these creatures, and they're clearly communicating with each other. Uh, they were bumping into walls, and then they were howling at each other. Yeah. There's like a clear communication happening where they're trying to coordinate some sort of attack. At least that's how the family felt about it. Now, the way the house was set up is there was a second floor roof. And then the first floor was a little bit wider than the second floor. And it had kind of its own separate roof. And after a while, the creature stopped walking on the porch. They left the porch, and it's just silence. And then they would hear them jump onto that first roof. No. The scary thing about this is that... All of, that. All of it. If you walked around the roof, you could actually look into the second floor windows. Oh, fuck. And so they're laying there, and they're periodically looking out their window. There was windows on either side of the room they were in, but there was a thin curtain between them and the window. So from time to time, these creatures would walk past their windows, oh. and they would stop. They put their paws onto the window and they would look inside but there was a very thin sheet between them and the glass so they couldn't fuckles. they couldn't see the creatures and the creatures couldn't see them all night they're listening to these things running around and sometimes they'd hear loud scratching like they'd figured something out and they were trying to burrow their way into the house Dude. but after a whole night at this they never actually broke the glass. They never got inside the house. And as the sun started to come up in the morning, the creatures jumped off the roof and they could hear them running away. And for about an hour, they didn't hear anything outside. The sun's come up. They felt safe again. So and that's they, when they put the for sale sign up. <laughs> so they left their room. They go downstairs and they finally open it up. And all over their property are signs of huge creatures that have been on their property Big massive poops. footprints with huge claws at the end they found tufts of hair that had gotten caught on fence posts and even scarier as they found all these points on the house in particular on the second floor 
when they were walking around on that roof where there were clear markings that they had tried to burrow into the house. There were these deep scratch marks into the side of the house. The front door had been scratched apart. I mean, it was really clear that whatever these creatures were, they were trying to get into the house. Yeah. But they'd just been unsuccessful. They this, were hungry. This experience was so traumatic for the family that they fucking sold the house yep. and they moved very quickly after that. And they've apparently not experienced anything like that since they left. So that's that story of the Palmyra Wolf incident. Interesting. Yeah, they, they, that's pretty much it. No more experiences. So what do you think those creatures were? I don't know. Let's talk about it after this. All right, Ben. So what did you learn after all these years? Well, about Mr. Fuggles? Whatever the dog, man. Well, there's multi-Fuggles. Right. And Mr. Fuggles has eight titties instead of two. Okay. So he's like more dog than man there. I see. But I've really dedicated the last several years of my studies to figuring out if Mr. Fuggles has a red rocket. Does he? Well, my data is inconclusive thus far. I see. Now let's see what our dipshits think about this week's cryptid in Maine. What did you think, eh? Okay, so first thing, I can't even imagine going through... This is why I don't like the woods. Oh, this is why I'm I not... knew you were going to say that. No, this is why. I mean, well, why? The, the whole point of civilization was a bunch of people to say, to said, no more bears in that fucking where our kids live. Mm-hmm. We're just going to get the bears out of town. They can still live. And, mm-hmm. you know, some guys like Jeff will go hunt them and stuff. But <laughs> no more in the city. Mm-hmm. And I agree. That mm-hmm. seems fair. Like, I haven't had to worry about a bear for, right, for right. a long, long time. Yeah. I don't remember the last time I was like, damn. We got to get inside because of the bears. I do remember the last time I had to deal with a bear. I know because you live where bears live. <laughs> you live where, this is why, you know, I wasn't making fun of Maine because the people are, you know, whatever. They're they're living where things that aren't people, you know, they shouldn't be there. <laughs> <laughs> the nature's like, no. The winters are like, no. The only thing is like, it's beautiful and the water's good. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the people are probably pretty hardy and nice. And right. Look out for each- okay, it's probably paradise on earth and we just don't know about it. I, see, I'm... We, I'm not going to open a whole can of worms discussing all of the wonderful things about living next to the forest. Okay, fair. Um, we don't need to talk about well, that okay, here. Then imagine imagine that scenario. Like, First of all, you got to have some guns in the house. That's the point I of agree. having guns. The whole point of Unless having guns. Unless you're collecting them for fucking future value later. Right. Uh, I don't understand the point of that. I don't get it. That's one thing. I was like, Shelly, you're a dumbass. Yeah. Right when we heard that, it's like, that's real life foreshadowing. Right. That's exactly. Fun. It was that's, beautiful, wasn't it? Fun. But yeah. I get why they want to, you know, but there's lots of things you can do to protect mm-hmm. and keep guns safe. He could have, get right if they that just thing. had that gun safe in the house. Dude, they had all night. He could have opened yeah, a window, yeah. fired that shit in the air, not even hurt nothing. And and Shelly could have so helped him. Hit if he wanted, if she wanted that gun safe locked and up high somewhere, she could have helped him take it down with mm-hmm. his back injury. If yeah. it was in the house. They had all night. So basically, it seems like Shelly just hated his guns. Right. She and didn't want him even on the property, but she had to allow it because she loved her husband. I bet she changed her mind later. She yeah. She's probably like, why don't we just have at least one? In there? At least one. Let's yeah. have one, you know, Mr. Right. Fuggles size caliber <laughs> gun in the house. What would that be? A turkey gun? <laughs> I don't know. Elephant gun? Some shit. We don't really know. But it sounds like it. five wolves. Yeah. Well, it's hard to say because they stood up on their hind legs. Dogs are smart. They do shit like that. Okay. Sometimes. I don't know. I've never seen them. I've never seen a wolf do that. Without like getting on the counter or something. Right. But, you know, maybe. It was dark. Maybe. You know, a lot of weird things happen when you're scared and when it's dark. Yeah. And when you're just kind of shooting at whatever. Right. right. Like, uh, it's a well, werewolf man with big titties. So we... <laughs> It only makes sense. So we... But it would be... It would, think about it. It'd be, it'd be like eight titties. You know how oh, it, my God. It would be, though. That'd be kind of interesting. <sighs> Big old floppy... Jeez. Eight titties. All right. Uh, maybe not so much. I did think of something while we're in the midst of this. What's up? Uh, when you mentioned the dogs, and then my my mind went from like the scary scenario to like, mm-hmm. those dogs better be okay. Don't, oh, you, don't oh, you dare yeah. bring me a story the where dogs, the animals right? don't, don't survive at the end. Well, as I and was... And it made me think, real quick, made me think of uh, a website. That would help people a lot, and myself included. What's that? Uh, you could call it the dog dies.com or some shit. Aww. I know, I know, but hear me out. It's a service to people like you uh, where it lists all the movies and TV shows where the dog dies. Oh, so you can avoid them? Yes. I just, I would yes. go through that list and be like, fuck you, fuck you. I'd write, I would. find all the writers too. I, I'd be yeah. like, Who's, who wrote the script? Yeah. Never watching your movie, not supporting <laughs> you. Your nightmares are too deep and too real. You're uh, personally blacklisting yeah. all of these producers and writers yeah, yep. in your own head. Yeah. And if that website exists already, please let me know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it might even be, watch, it's actually like no, the dog dies. It's like the dog dies. And I just clean this from, I know. from somewhere. <laughs> but if not, 
somebody buy that mm-hmm. uh we should buy that if not let us know we'll buy that and we're gonna start that fucking service for people because i'm not gonna do that research and i'm gonna go after these people each of the, these riders that kill dogs in the fucking or dog-like creatures uh-huh. you know there's a few of them uh like there's that that the, the, the latest riddick what are you doing there quit doing that the latest riddick mm-hmm. i'm like yes riddick and it was years ago it's like i remember you ago. seeing you're like yes like, fuck you then riddick. you got done and you're like fuck that movie yeah, spoiler alert fuck you <laughs> yeah that would be the first one on the goddamn website oh they i killed, am legend they kill yeah. dog oh god i know it was such a great book uh, Omega Man, and but then the movie awful. See, it's just fuck awful. You. Okay, so I never finished that movie fuck because you. the it's dog a German Shepherd. I, I never finished it because mm. I knew that was going to. I only watched a small portion of that movie, and I'm like, nope. Yeah, can't I, do you it. lose all trust. It's like I okay, it. I get it. Kill the people. Of mm-hmm. course, we all hate people. Of course, people. We kill can the Im- humans. We can imagine that shit. <laughs> but the dog is innocent, and yep. it tried to help you, and it was your friend. It licked your face. Fuck you. <laughs> They kill dogs.com and that's what it, that's what it'll be. They kill dogs.com mm-hmm. and it will be uh, this is gonna turn out really bad. <laughs> and it's gonna be all the writers and directors that are that okay that shit. And oh. even the computer animators that are like, yeah, we'll make it happen. Oh, you're all talking about what what video game is that where the where you have to kill dogs? Oh god, all of them. You oh. have to kill dogs in every open Red Dead world. Redemption, right? For sure. Wolves yeah, we have dogs. to kill wolves. Uh-huh. Yeah. And just like, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I just want to shoot guys in the head. What the hell's going on? <laughs> What's wrong with me? I think that was too sensitive. Oh, I don't know. So, okay. That's way on a tangent. <laughs> right. Uh, but there's there's a more serious uh, question I have for you, though. What's up? It's because you, you brought it up a little bit. What? Like your history with uh, oh, the yeah. wolf-dog mm-hmm. hybrid and yeah. wolves and dogs and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like when I first met you, you told me the story. Mm-hmm. And I was blown away because the next sentence was like, here, meet my big dogs. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. So if you will, would you tell us that story? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, when I was in the second grade, my parents adopted a dog uh, from my second grade teacher. And she was pregnant and she didn't want to have animals around her kids, evidently. So she was giving up her dog. Well, Mm -hmm. her dog was a timber wolf Malamute mix. Mm Mm-hmm. So my parents adopted this dog and brought it home. The thing is, I think I was uh, seven. The thing is with this dog, we had this dog for about, I think we had the dog for like five or six months. I don't really remember. The thing about this dog is uh, it was more wolf than Malamute. Right. It was very, her name was Kaya, female, absolutely stunning, gorgeous dog. I remember as a child thinking she looked like a horse. She was so she was big and beautiful. Big. She was so massive. And I have always loved animals my whole life. So I wanted to be her friend. Um, but there was something about her that was kind of, it, it was off putting to me as a child. She intimidated me. She wow. made me nervous. And I didn't know why, because I'd never really been nervous around dogs before. Well, she attached herself to my mom emotionally. She became my mom's dog. Loved my mother followed her everywhere uh just it just was mom's dog and it got to the point where i couldn't really go outside uh she kaya didn't want me out there she became very territorial and after a handful of months however long it was it was right before saint patrick's day my cousin and our two friends i was young we all went outside to play in the backyard so uh kaya was always very protective of her toys um she kind of carried her toys around like a baby like her puppies and she had this weird habit of uh, she actually dug a den under our back patio that was big enough for me to crawl in i never could but i could have crawled in there Mm. and she kept all of her toys in there Well, this specific day, the kids wanted to play fetch with Kaya, and one of the kids threw her toy, and it landed on the roof of our, like, patio area, Mm -hmm. and uh, Kaya, I keep (laughs) wanting to say Kona, Kaya got really emotional about it. She was, like, anxious and very upset that her little animal, puppy, whatever, was on the patio roof, and I had... Uh, against what I had always been taught, I ended up squatting down next to this dog. Well, this dog was so big. Mm -hmm. When I squatted down next to her, I was trying to comfort her. But I don't know if she saw it as uh, aggression. I don't know. I don't know what it was. 
all I know is she turned on me and I was mauled mm -hmm. by this uh, giant. She was huge by this huge ass dog. And mauled, mauled. Mauled, mauled, yes. Yeah. Um, and to make a long story short, of course, these kids saw the whole thing. Everyone yeah. was traumatized by it. I was traumatized by it. I think I was traumatized less than anyone else. Yeah, you didn't see it. You only heard the yeah. pain and... Well, I felt, and I went through the experience, and it took a very long time to heal from it because I had surgeries and plastic surgery was involved. Um, and, you know, I still carry the physical scars around with me. I had no lips. Uh, my teeth are crooked because of it. I've got worse sight in one eye because of it. Mm -hmm. Jaw problems. And um, after that, I, you know, developed headaches and all this stuff. So anyways, mauled by a... a more wolf than Malamute. Yeah. She was she was very much that. Um, and, you know, stuff happened after that. Very weird things. Um, we ended up... Um, and I don't need to go into all that. Basically, what it instilled in me was a respect for these animals. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite animals on the planet are wolves. Yeah. Um, it's got a tattooed on you. I, I've got... Yeah. I've got... Uh, if you were going to protect any animal, if you're going to start a charity, I know <clears> you do that. Yeah. And, and I love dogs. I love canines. Mm -hmm. um, all of them. They're just, they're amazing creatures. Wolves in specific, though, they have a special place in my heart. Even though I experienced this, I've never developed a fear of animals or of dogs. I've always had big dogs. And I developed a healthy respect for them and an understanding in a really weird way. Whereas I didn't understand them before, I did after, you know. How come you, you, is that why you think you're not afraid of dogs? Is because you, you're like, oh, if I just would have realized that it yeah, wasn't the dog's I, fault. I think so. Um, I never blamed the dog. I don't remember ever blaming the dog. Because you've worked with big cats mm -hmm. and also wolves in, mm -hmm. the, in the, the zoos and yep. those kind of things. Yeah. So. I've been around large exotic animals quite a bit uh, after that experience. So. Yeah. Um, so I have a, a special place in my heart for wolves specifically. Right. And yeah, if I were to work in a conservation aspect anywhere, of course, any animal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But wolves, 100%. So yeah. when we go back to that little story of my hunter friend that stated they kill wolves every chance they get, mm -hmm. it really uh, stuck me. Yeah. Because there's no reason for that, especially when it comes down to the reasoning why uh their reasoning why right because they kill for fun saying that they they kill for sport first of all if that were true which it's not but if it were that's pot, the pot calling the kettle black right <laughs> because uh guess who's out there shooting animals right you know for sport for sport you they, can't, they you can't eat a wolf well, but you can save people from wolves right can't eat coyote you can't eat fucking groundhog i mean i don't know but what they, this they, 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 i don't know, know what this stuff. person eats you know yeah. i don't know if they eat everything they kill i no, they're not eating fucking gophers <laughs> so well, you know gopher, if deep fat <clears throat> fried is involved it would be pretty good <laughs> Well, you know, I've had four or five pretty good gophers. I just, I just find it kind of ironic that a human is going to go out and kill an animal because they kill for sport when they're not eating the animal they're killing that kills for sport. It's defense, honey. It's just very frustrating. You got a, Mr. Fuggles with the big titties out there. But you know, I couldn't. I didn't. That day, I didn't have the energy to be like, "All right, listen, <laughs> <laughs> that is not how this works." And here's some data. And also, I love wolves. How dare you? Not yeah, know that. yeah. Right. Well. Right. So, but either way, anyways, yeah. human are afraid of wolves for many many reasons and one of them in my personal opinion is because of their intelligence level they're fucking smart they are especially when they act as a group it's yeah like, motherfucker. coyotes are smart too coyotes yes when i i have a short little story but i had a little jack now mm -hmm. i had a little jack russell terrier that was named jack mm -hmm. and he was a, he was brave most of the time i He'd remember he was in fucking cute backyard. as hell <laughs> yeah he's so cute and when that's I the sound he made when he ran around the yard <laughs> For real. And, and I lived up on the top of this hill and the coyotes would, would feign sounds of like a baby. Mm -hmm. they, would, they would have this like hurt baby sound. Mm -hmm. And, and Drocknall was like, oh, I got to help them. I want, mm -hmm. you know, he'd be right at the fence and there'd be like three or four ready to just kill him. Yeah. It was like, holy shit. Come right. here, little Drocknall. Yeah. Those... It's a good thing the fence was good, but he dug under that shit. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you're digging to your death, bro. Like literally they're, they're doing this. 
The propaganda's working uh, on my dog. The propaganda got him. The propaganda. Not good. Oh my god. But anyway, that's coyotes are very smart too. Right. So right. I think, I think you're right. I think all these animals that trick other animals mm-hmm. make us go. Oh. Well, yeah. I mean, if especially when they can trick us, mm-hmm. because we get creeped out by smart things, mm-hmm. uh, things that are that we perceive as smarter than us or more cunning than us, we get creeped out by it. That's again why I stay out of the woods because everything in the woods <laughs> is smarter than me. <laughs> well, you're everything. Part, well, it's like the ocean. You're part of the food chain. Everything's smarter about the ocean than me <laughs> in the ocean. Yeah. So um, everything on land smart. I should just sit in a hole. I think. I think oftentimes these cryptids, these stories of these cryptids. Um, are, you know, maybe, um, an an animal that might be deformed or maybe it's diseased. I don't know. This was five though. And this was was all five. And the thing is, the thing that got me was they stood on their hind legs. Now I know dogs do that. Get on the counter. Yeah. They all stand up. Like a a, a wiener dog will get on its back legs and ask for a treat. I have never in my life seen a wolf stand on its hind legs in photos or video, anything like that. To look at something. I bet they do, and that's why werewolves exist, is because somebody saw that shit, and they're like, uh... So they uh, were able to stand on their... It wouldn't surprise me. They got big-ass femur bones. Well, it wouldn't surprise me that they would be able to do that. They wouldn't be able to walk that way, though. No. But they'd be able to stand up to to get a better look at something, and it wouldn't surprise me at Mm -hmm. all. They're smart. And maybe they knew. They're like, these guys are scared. Let's check this out. <laughs> Let me, I'm going to show them all eight of my titties. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys for listening to our story yeah. of cryptids mm-hmm. and uh, the Monique story, too. That's that's a pretty personal well, thing that you shared with us yeah, well, here on the dipshit files. You know, I walk around and, and I see, uh, for years, when I look in the mirror, I, all I see are, are the scars that are left behind i never see that um but a lot of people say oh, i didn't even know yeah i'm thankful i can't complain yeah it's what a changed. fantastic job those doctors did. they really did yeah. i can't i can't complain because i have lips i have right. a nose and you went through years of mm-hmm. having to go and kids were mm-hmm. very mean and mm-hmm. they weren't empathetic to you you didn't yeah. wear you didn't wear a t-shirt every day that said oh i was uh, i'm a victim of a dog a, mo- a wolf mauling right <laughs> you think they would be like oh but they wouldn't have cared anyway they wouldn't have cared no, no. kids are cruel no they They're like what's that ointment on your face yeah well that was one of the worst parts because yeah. there was a special ointment that i had to wear because of my scars on my face mm-hmm um, if I spent, I've lived in California and I spent a lot of time in the sun. Mm-hmm. So they made this, made me wear this special ointment that didn't have a, if it had a color to it, it may not have been so bad. Right, I don't know. Right. Or but worse. it was clear and it was really, really thick. So I had to wear it on my scars. And the majority of my scars were my nose, my eyelids, my, I mean, my eyebrows and all around my mouth because the scars were fully on one side, the right side of my upper lip because I didn't have one. They had to make a new one. And then one that ran down all the way through my chin. Did they make it out of your butthole? Sorry. (laughs) Sorry. So I had to wear this ointment to cover up these scars and it always looked like I had a snotty nose Mm. because my mouth was always goopy looking. Right. You know? And the kids, of course, weren't like, oh, we'll let that slide. No, 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 no. They called me Scarface. They called called me hair lip um I mean, there's so many yeah somebody said made fun of me because when i told them what happened they're like oh well you've got to stop french kissing dogs <laughs> and i'm like that's kind of funny oh my god what are you talking about that's, you fucking moron okay it's not funny no. makes me hate people anyways funny. yeah um yeah so when i look in the mirror now i see them but not as uh, prominently as I would if I wouldn't have worn that ointment right. and looked like I had a snot nose. You following because, through with the doctor's directed orders is probably why it worked out so well. Well, the, the second time I ended up in the hospital is because I didn't follow doctor's orders. Oh! And I ended up stabbing myself in the face with a fork Ooh. because I was adamant about eating with a fork. Oh. The doctor said no forks. He said, no forks at all. And you're like, what am I, a non-fork Spoons. eater? Spoons, exactly. I'm like, you she can't did. tell me what to do. So I ate with a fork. First bite, fucking stabbed myself right in the mouth. Busted some internal stitches. Had to go back to the doctor to have them repair. I know. And you got I scolded. Know. Yeah, well. You I know, a dentist was scolded you for like, you didn't floss a couple times a week that you're supposed to. Well, yeah, I know. this is different. So Dr. King's like just shaking her head. She's like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyway, so well, th- that's the story. Yeah. That's why I look so fucking weird. You did you did a beautiful thing. 
I wonder if, I mean, you were a beautiful child and then you were mauled and you're still a beautiful child. Well, even thank th- you. Going through that and you became a very beautiful woman. Well, thank uh, you. We did the ugly duckling this week I mm-hmm. wonder, and we talked about it and I wonder, Aww. I mean, do you feel, do you feel like some of that crap, like that's basically what happened to the ugly duckling is like something happened, <laughs> a mix up of some kind. Or? I don't, I don't know. I look at pictures of me pre dog attack and I look different. Right. I really do. Um, my nose is a different shape. Uh, my lips are completely different because the lips that I have were created by the doctors. Right, from your bowel. Right, not from my... <laughs> <damn it. laughs> I'll kiss hey, my what, little, is that, what does that I'll say kiss about my honey's you? little booty lips. <laughs> and then a meme started. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> see, what, see what happens when you share? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep, I'm just is, getting ahead of the internet. Yeah, just I see. getting ahead of it. I see how it is. I love you. All right. Uh, anyway, but yeah, and then it became a beautiful swan, which mm. you are... Fuck, fuck swans. Oh, I think you're blind. You just love me. That's, love is love is blind. It's blind. I can I, use that other voice. I, love is blind. It is blind. You'll love me just because, you know. Let's talk about blind <laughs> love. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for listening to our silly show. Thank you. Uh, and our, what the hell is the story about? Some kind of Palmyra dog. wolves. Yeah, Hybrid, weird fucking wolf story. Mr. Fuggles is going in the Mr. title. Mr. Fuggles with the titties. Uh, Mr. Titty Fuggles. I don't Mr. Know. Fuggles with eight titties. Mr. Are you sure? It, it was Mr. Now it would be Mrs. Mrs. Fuggles with eight matter. titties. It's, it's with the, the current, big boobies. It's the current year. Does it matter at all? <laughs> it doesn't matter at all. Uh, thank you so much. To the trusted turd triad. Yes. We've got Don. We've got Chris and we've got Bodie. Yes. We appreciate all of them. We appreciate the Godhead and the garbage disposal on Facebook. Our own shit box where you'll find the shit box wizard. Yes. You can contact us at info at scatcast.com. Yes, you can. I think we have a piece of merch or two, an item or two. Maybe. At scatcast.com that every time you do that kind of thing, we jump for joy. Yeah. Uh, I also do cartwheels when you do Patreon, mm-hmm. which is always a very nice thing. You can find us there at patreon.com forward slash scatcast. Yes. And you'll find a fuckload, a mm-hmm. fuckload of bonus materials in there. And just in case you didn't know, it's scatcast, S-K, K. not S-C. Please God. Yes. Save yourself the trouble. Yeah. You know, if you thought two girls, one cup was a thing. Oh. Scatcast.com, not scatcast.com. With a C. You're just like, my eyes! Yeah, it's been a bad. Yeah, sorry. You know, we sorry almost want I, to buy that website just sorry to if shut I hurt it down. your ears. I did, you did. Sorry, it's okay. Yeah. All right. Well, as always, we'll talk at you in the future. And it'll seem like the present. Bye. Bye. <laughs> If I could have everyone's attention, this is my presentation on Mr. Fuggles, the Palomira Wolfman boy with eight titties. It's called Red Rocket or Not. Bing Bing bong. bong. Hmm. (laughs) Just contemplating that one, huh? Hmm. Yeah. Hmm.